All right, let's jump right in. Today, we're tackling maybe the most fundamental idea in all of programming. It's the bedrock, the thing that makes everything else possible. How does a program actually remember stuff? We're talking, of course, about variables. I mean, really think about it for a second. Every time you play a game, how does it know your score? Or when you log into your favorite app, how does it remember who you are? It seems like magic, but the answer to all of this is a really simple but incredibly powerful concept. So here's what we're gonna cover. We'll start with what a variable even is and why we absolutely need them. Then we'll check out the main types of data they can hold, how to change what's inside them, and then the best part, you're gonna write your first program using them. All right, first up, what is a variable? Let's get right into the core concept. You know, the easiest way to picture a variable is to just think of it as a little box, a box that lives inside the computer's memory. You can put a piece of information in it, like a number or some text, slap a label on the outside, and boom, the computer will remember it for you. And every single one of these boxes has three parts. First, you've got the type, which is basically telling the computer what kind of stuff can go in this particular box. Is it for numbers? Is it for text? Then you've got the name. That's the label you put on the box so you can find it again later. And finally, of course, the value. That's the actual thing you've put inside the box. So let's see what that looks like in real code. Here, int, that's our type. It tells the computer, hey, this box is for integers, you know, whole numbers. Then we have age, that's the name, our label for the box, and 25, well, that's the value we've put inside. See, simple as that. Okay, so we've got these little boxes, but why? Why do we even need them? Let's talk about giving your program a memory. Honestly, without variables, a program would have the memory of a goldfish. No joke. It would forget everything the incident happened. Variables are what let a program actually hold on to important stuff, like your name after you type it in, or the answer to a calculation it just did, or, you know, your high score in a game. It's absolutely essential. So check this out. We can create a box called name and put arm in it. Then we make another box called score and put the number 90 in it. They're totally separate pieces of info, but the magic is our program can now reach into both of those boxes, pull out the values, and put them together to create something new, like a sentence that says Amr has 90 points. That's the power right there. All right, so we've established that a variable is a box, but you can't just shove anything you want into any old box. The type sets the rules. So what can you put in the box? Let's look at the most important data types. Okay, these are gonna be your best friends, your main building blocks. You've got int for whole numbers, five, 10, 100, whatever. Then there's double for when you need decimal points, like 3.14. Char is for just one single character, like the letter A. Boolean is super, super simple. It's either true or it's false, that's it. And finally, string, notice the capital S, that's for any chunk of text you can imagine. Okay, listen up, because this is a super important detail, one that trips up so many people when they're starting out. If you're dealing with text, a string, you have to use double quotes, but for a single character, a char, you use single quotes. The computer is really, really picky about this, so burn this one into your brain. It'll save you a lot of headaches, trust me. Next up, changing and setting values. This is where the data gets dynamic. I mean, it's kind of obvious when you think about it, right? It's called a variable because it can vary. The stuff you put in the box isn't set in stone. You can change it, you can update it, you can replace it completely. And that is what makes our programs feel alive and interactive. So let's imagine we create a new variable. We'll call it x and we'll put the number 10 inside. Simple enough. We have a box labeled x and inside there's a 10. But then on the very next line of code, we can just say x equals 15. And what happens? The program goes and finds that box labeled x it takes out the 10, throws it away, and puts 15 inside instead. So now, if we ask the program, hey, what's an x? It's going to say 15. The old value is just gone. But what if you have a value that you absolutely, positively do not want to change, ever? For that, we use something called a constant. All you do is add this little keyword, final, before you create it. And that tells the computer, lock this box and throw away the key. If you try to change it later, nope, you'll get an error. And this is a huge deal in bigger programs because it stops you or someone else on your team from accidentally changing a really important number, like, say, the number of days in a week. It's a safety net, and it makes your code way more reliable. Okay, we've talked enough theory. We've covered the what, 
the why and the how. The best way to really get this stuff to sink in is to actually do it. So guess what? It's your turn. Let's write your first program. All right, get your code editor open because it's time to get your hands dirty. I want you to create three variables. First, a string called name. Put your own name in there. Next, an int called age for your age. And finally, a double called height. Once you've got those three variables set up, use the print command to show each of them on the screen. Go ahead and pause right now, give it a real try, and see what happens when you run it. And there you have it. You did it. You just created variables and used them to make a program remember things. No, seriously, take a second and let that sink in. This simple idea, these little labeled boxes for storing data, is the foundation for everything else you will ever do in programming. You've just learned the most important concept. And that really is the key takeaway here. You now have the power to give a program a memory. You can make it remember a name, a high score, a favorite color, a location. I mean, the possibilities are literally endless. So now that you know how to do it, the only question left is, what information are you going to store first?